Hey guys, what's up? It's Lucas here again, coming at you today with another graphics card comparison video, this time a little bit different than the ones I've done before. Way back in 2016, I did a comparison of the NVIDIA GTX 1070 and GTX 970, and while a lot of you liked that one, the comment I sort of heard the most was that you really would have liked to see the GTX 1070 compared with the GTX 980 instead, considering new graphics cards typically compete with the higher tier card from the previous generation more than their direct predecessors. So today we're doing exactly that. What you're seeing on screen is the NVIDIA RTX 2060 going up against a GTX 1070 in Anthem. Yes, the open demo that ran through the first weekend in February. And you'll notice that we have a bit of a different layout on the screen this time as well. Behind the scenes, I've been working on a project I call the Frame Performance Analysis Tool, or FPAT, which is something I plan on continuing to develop and improve on to provide more granular performance statistics than you'd typically get out of a simple FPS overlay. However, I must stress that this tool is still in development, so it's currently best to look at this as experimental, a general picture of what to expect from each GPU. As you can see, FPAT allows us to compare performance both in terms of frames per second and, more importantly, frame times, or frame persistence, as you may want to think about it. Simply put, in order to get the smoothest gameplay experience, you want frames to remain on screen for a consistent period of time, frame to frame. If you have one frame that displays for 6 milliseconds and another that displays for 10, that's still 16 milliseconds or 60 FPS, but it's not a consistent experience and it won't feel smooth at all. And well, as you can see here, Anthem isn't doing so great in either category. FPS is just all over the place, and while frame times are closer to their targeted values than you might think at first glance, there's also a lot of spikes beyond target frame pacing while the game hitches and stutters over loading in new assets and managing players and NPCs within the game. But if I bring up a couple more statistics here, you'll see that there's more to this story than meets the eye. Yep, that's right, CPU utilization is at a near constant 100%, even in menus. Now, it should be relatively simple to hit a locked 1080p60 on either of these cards. I mean, after all, this is a Frostbite Engine game, and so far we've seen nothing but incredible performance across the board with this engine. But Anthem appears to be a crucial exception. Something is clearly wrong with the way the game utilizes the CPU, making it an unduly demanding game to run. Hopefully this is something Bioware can fix, but in the meantime, it does make for a rather interesting benchmark. Even if CPU is being strained the most, it's not such a bottleneck that your choice of GPU is entirely inconsequential. As you can see, at 1080p, the RTX 2060 sporadically pulls ahead of the GTX 1070 by a notable margin, as much as 25% in some scenarios. Now, this being a dynamic multiplayer experience, it's difficult to synchronize footage exactly, so you might see a bit of leapfrogging going on in the graphs. But the gist of it is clear. RTX 2060 fares better than the GTX 1070 in even the worst case scenario. Now, if you're familiar with the specs of these cards, this is rather fascinating. As it turns out, both GPUs feature the same 1920 CUDA cores, and the RTX 2060 actually has a smaller bus width at 192 bits versus the GTX 1070's 256. The 2060 also has less VRAM at 6GB instead of 8GB, and even lower base clocks at 1365MHz versus 1500MHz, though it is worth noting that both GPUs turbo up to 1680MHz by default. So what's going on here? How is the 2060 able to maintain such a lead over a GPU that, on paper, seems like the stronger card? Well, it comes down to advancements in the Turing architecture, really. RTX and DLSS aren't the only new features here. Smaller process node, better compression, and a new, highly efficient streaming multiprocessor architecture go a long way, and that's coupled with fast GDDR6 memory, leaving last gen's GDDR5 in the dust. It's an impressive showing, but time will tell whether a 6GB frame buffer is enough for the RTX 2060 to stay ahead. So what about 4K performance then? Here's where we start to see the card really being pushed to its limits, and the results are rather interesting. Jumping over to Shadow of the Tomb Raider, 
we can see that the difference in rasterized rendering performance is a small yet significant one. For this benchmark, I've elected to run the game at the highest graphical preset, with anti-aliasing set to SMAAT2X, not the most expensive option available in the game, but still very effective at smoothing out the final image without inducing too much blurring, especially at 4K. Unlike Anthem, the GPU is the bottleneck here, and the RTX 2060 pushes just shy of 30fps in every scenario, with some segments actually being above the 30fps mark. I can vouch from experience that it doesn't take much tweaking the graphics settings to achieve a locked 30fps in actual gameplay, but the 1070 on the other hand, well, let's just say significant compromises are required to do the same. How about 1080p then? Well, while both cards are obviously more comfortable at a lower resolution, I feel like the benchmark doesn't really tell the whole story here. It might look like both cards are struggling to achieve 60fps, but that simply isn't reflective of actual gameplay. While the 1070 may drop frames in certain scenarios, the RTX 2060 mostly remains on target, even at higher resolutions like 1440p. So it's really best to take these results with a grain of salt, but an interesting comparison nonetheless. It also highlights an important point recently brought to light by an excellent article on TechSpot, posing the question, is 6GB enough VRAM in 2019? The truth is, while games like Shadow of the Tomb Raider may allocate as much VRAM as possible, it doesn't mean all of it is currently being utilized by actual game data. So while memory may appear to be a bottleneck on the RTX 2060 here, even with 2GB less VRAM than the 8GB on the 1070, it still manages to cross that crucial threshold of 4K at 30fps, leaving the 1070 in the proverbial dust. Going from 25 to 30fps might not sound all that impressive on paper, but it's a critical step forward that puts real 4K gaming within reach on a mainstream GPU. Not bad at all. But of course, NVIDIA isn't just banking on raw horsepower here. It's no coincidence that DLSS is being introduced alongside RTX to sort of mitigate the performance cost of ray tracing, but it doesn't stop there. For the uninitiated, DLSS, or Deep Learning Super Sampling, is an AI-based upscaling solution designed to run directly on specialized tensor cores present on RTX GPUs. By running the process on completely separate silicon, there's no added cost whatsoever to rendering games upscaled using the technology. This means you can, for example, run a game like Final Fantasy XV on the RTX 2060 at a lower resolution which is then enhanced to 4K. And well, the results kind of speak for themselves, don't they? I'm running the benchmark on high settings across the board, with all GameWorks features disabled to avoid unnecessary overhead, and at 4K resolution, the winner is plain as day. While you are losing some fidelity with DLSS enabled, to the naked eye it's a fair approximation of the real thing and is absolutely the way I'd recommend playing Final Fantasy XV on PC. Not only does DLSS turn in much higher frame rates at similar image quality, it also cleans up visual artifacts on transparent surfaces like hair and glass windows, areas the game previously struggled to render properly even with temporal anti-aliasing enabled. It's an impressive showing for Turing, and really helps the RTX 2060 punch above its weight for a $350 card. In fact, interestingly enough, while I was in the process of producing this video, Benchmark King 3D Mark added a new demo to its repertoire, Port Royal, the ray tracing benchmark, but this time with DLSS enabled. We're leaving the GTX 1070 behind here at this point, seeing as it's incompatible with both technologies, but pitting the RTX 2060 against itself for a moment is revelatory in this particular demo. It's kind of like Tomb Raider all over again. On the one hand, we have RTX enabled without DLSS, and as you can see, it's pretty much one step above a slideshow, frame rates dipping below the 20s at 1440p. On the other hand, enable DLSS, and suddenly we're well above the 30fps mark, and that's with ray tracing still enabled. I mean, yes, there is a perceptible difference in image quality here, particularly on rasterized post-processing effects like depth of field. But overall, the image is quite comparable, and at the very least, 
well worth the sacrifice for such a big boost in performance. Now, what's really remarkable here is that by running RTX and DLSS simultaneously, those tensor cores I mentioned are actually doing double duty. Because the sample count for real-time ray tracing is still far too low to create a seamless image with current gen technology, NVIDIA has packed in a denoising solution to clean up the results. And yes, this runs on tensor cores too, just like DLSS. As you'd expect, the number of tensor cores available to the GPU varies by model, and the 2060 carries just 240 of them, which might sound like a lot, but that's still less than half the 544 tensor cores found on the 2080 Ti. That's still over 50 teraflops of compute power, but you have to remember that because the 2060 can only cast 5 giga rays per second, it's more work to denoise the results on lower end graphics cards like this than it is on higher end cards like the 2080 Ti. All things considered then, it's a very impressive turnout. That about does it for this video, but of course we've only scratched the surface of the new Turing architecture, and there's lots more to come as well. Please do consider liking and subscribing if you did indeed enjoy this video, and let me know in the comments if you'd like to see more analysis using FPAT in the future. In the meantime, for more benchmarking goodness, you can click on over to an uncut run of 3 d Mark Time Spy, pitting the RTX 2060 head-to-head -head with the GTX 1070 in a more traditional format for this channel. Speaking of which, I'd also like to invite you to my new website, lucasc.me. You may have known it as Thinkboxly in the past, but it's a new year and a fresh start for my work. Using a more personal brand frees me up to create a broader variety of content, just like this video, so I hope to see you there. Until then, thanks for watching as always, and I'll see you next time.